guys, I kind of wanted to go over again a little bit about shipping your geckos. Um, it doesn't have to be a very complicated process, and once you do it a few times, you pretty much get the swing of things, but it can be kind of intimidating for the first few times you try it. Um, there are a few things you need ahead of time. Um, little shipping containers for the inside. This is an eight ounce deli cup. You can order those um, from lots of different places. I like the nice clear ones. I think I get this from the WebsterRantStore.com. Um, I put a little bit of paper towel in here. Um, these eight ounce cups are great. I actually prefer them to be a little bit smaller than that for shipping smaller geckos, but the 4.5 ounces are a little bit harder to find. Um, like to put just a little bit of water misted inside there. You don't want to flood out the gecko. You don't want it sitting in a ton of moisture the entire trip. But I do like a little bit of moisture to keep things um, just, just comfortable for the gecko. These are not a dry, all the time species. Um, just watch out for tails and toes when you close up the lid. Now these, these holes, this, these cups do have holes in them that I've punched myself. Um, you can save yourself a little bit of money by just like buying a dollar hole punch and like punching your own holes instead of buying pre-punched cups. But you can buy the pre-punched cups if you want to. Um, these are the kinds of boxes I use. These are seven by seven by six inch boxes and these are styrofoam filled. Um, I think these are three, yeah, these are three quarters of an inch styrofoam. You don't wanna ship reptiles or really any living thing inside a box with no styrofoam. For one thing, the styrofoam does help regulate um, temperatures a little bit. And better than that, it adds a ton of crush weight to this box. Um, you can pretty much like stab the box, whatever. And I mean, you can stand on these boxes and they won't crush, which is really, really important with these little guys. Um, for filling inside the box, I just like to use this crumpled brown paper. I buy this, it's like painter's paper at home improvement stores. It's really cheap to just buy a roll of it and it's recyclable too. Um, just like, you can just crumple it up and fill the box with it. And I like that just because it's recyclable it doesn't like kill the landfill, absolutely, like styrofoam packing might. Um, some people do use like newspaper. You kind of want to avoid anything with print on it because there are some dyes and things that might possibly be toxic to animals and you don't want that. Um, I just like to set, oh, you know what? Before you do that, I like to take a little bit of scotch tape, making sure you're not covering up the air holes on the sides of the cup and just tape it two or three times. Uh, I've heard horror stories of the occasional gecko getting out of their cup. This guy is little, so he's not gonna get out of there. Um, but just to be on the safe side, you might wanna do that with just a little scotch tape. Um, so we'll set him in there. For my new buyers, I like to include this little just care package. This is a little bit of a sample of the food they're currently eating. Um, it has instructions on how to feed it. It's got a little care sheet in here that'll walk you through, and it's got my contact information on there again, and my business card. And I like to just slide that in there. Just, to, just in case pack. Most people who order from me, I mean, they know what they're doing already. They don't need any, any of that stuff, but it just makes me feel better <laughs> to have that in there. Um, and then you can just put a little bit more of this paper. You don't want to overpack this. You don't want it to like be crushing down on the gecko. Um, you want to put that top, top thing on there. So then we have this little warning label here, harmless, non-venomous, live gecko in secure packaging inside. And then it's got the Latin name and the common name. Um, and you write the you want to write the number of whatever it is. So this is this would be a male. So it would be 1.0 Corella ciliatus. Um, you just want to write however many are in this box. And this size box actually in good weather, uh, I can put like three three of those eight ounce deli cups in there. Um, so the seven by seven by six boxes cover pretty much all of my orders. Um, oh, also on the back of this 
label here. I do have a secondary shipping label. Um, that's important in case these guys need to open up the box for whatever reason. Maybe the outside label gets cut off. Um, sometimes they might check shipments just to make sure you're on the up and up. But um, you just kind of take this box here. Take it. And then you've got your label here. And you're going to tape it all the way across. This is just the cheap way to do it. You can buy those little um, package slips to put on the top of the box too. But this is just the inexpensive way to do it. You don't have to invest a ton of money to do this. Um, with this box also, to comply with the Lacey Act, you want to have on the outside the Latin name again and the common name, Live Harmless Reptiles, written on there. And that little sticker up there, I ship through Ship Your Reptiles. They're a great company. Um, they save me a lot of money on shipping, so that, that saves my customers a lot of money, so I like to work with them. Um, and they also, they offer um, like an insurance if your package is late or if something happens to your package, um, God forbid, you can contact them and they'll work with you um, getting money back to your customer. So that's always a good thing to have. So um, this is the kind of box that I use when I need to not include any kind of temperature regulation. Now this is my Big Bertha box. This is the box I use when I need to maybe ship a bunch of geckos or include some kind of heat to keep the gecko warm. Um, you don't want a heating pack to be used in a really small box like the 7x7x6. Seven by seven by this is a 12x9x6 and it works really well um, if you've got just one or two geckos to ship. You can set them on this side of the box and apply the heat on this side. Some people say you should use the heat pack on the top inside lid, you know, tape it here, turn it down, let it go. But um, I, that worries me a little bit because sometimes tape doesn't stick so well to the styrofoam and it might fall down and slide around. So I really like to have it over here, you know, with a bunch of paper in between the heat and the gecko. The heat will still be able to get over there but the heat pack itself is not going to end up sitting right on your temperature sensitive crested gecko. You don't want that. Um, to work these heat packs, you just take them out of the wrapper. Um, you don't want to buy like those cheap hot hands versions that get hot right away from like the Walmart, like checkout lanes. They set them out there when it gets cold outside. Um, you want these nice, they last for 40 hours instead of just like two, like the hot hands do. The hot hands get really hot really fast and it's gonna be too overwhelming for this box. This releases heat slowly um, and it's really good for temperatures, I would say in low 40s and below a little bit. Um, you really wanna be cautious when using any kind of heat with this species though. They are so um, sensitive to being too hot that you're gonna to have to kind of play it by ear. Um, like you can't ship from cold to hot with a heat pack in the box. So um, just, if you have a question about temperatures that you're shipping from and to, uh, send me a message, let me know, and I will try and walk you through it if I can. But yeah, you'll take it out of this wrapper, you'll let it get a little bit warm, you can even wrap it in a kitchen towel for you know 20 minutes or whatever and you'll feel the heat start working. Um, if you pick up one of these things and it feels hard instead of bendy, that means it's, it's compromised. So um, that one won't work. You want it to be bendy and feel soft before you open it up. Um, they harden as they get, they use off their heat. Um, you can open it up. You'll tape it to the box over here so that it stays over here. Use your packing material like you did in the other one. You can do your little care package if you want to do that. You know, fill the box with your paper again. Close the lid. Put your stuff on there again. Um, these 12 by 9 by 6 boxes are going to cost you a little bit more to ship. Um, FedEx goes by, FedEx, UPS, all those shippers go by box size as well as weight. So that's just something to consider. You don't want to go crazy with the box size. You want to keep things um, reasonable for your customer. You don't want to overcharge them for shipping. Um, or you won't get too many sales. You don't want to go like, yeah, shipping's gonna be $120 and they're gonna be like, I'm going to pass. Thank you very much. And gecko is not that important. So yeah, um, just keep things reasonable for your customers by trying to buy the smallest size box you can that still keeps your gecko safe. Um, then you'll wanna tape your label on just like the other time. 
Um, some people do punch holes in the sides of boxes. I don't find that necessary because these boxes are already not completely airtight as it is. There's little holes here that the air gets through. Um, these aren't solid piece styrofoam, so there's little cracks that it gets through. Um, I don't find it necessary to poke extra holes in the box. I've been shipping for years now, and I've never had a problem with that. These guys are not mammals. They don't use tons and tons and tons of oxygen, so a little bit flowing through is good. When you're using a heat pack, you may want you may want to go ahead and add a couple holes because the oxygen, the extra oxygen, does help the heat um, work a little bit better. Um, it's pretty much up to you. So the three things you're going to want to check for your uh, potential buyers. They're, first of all, they're going to want to know how much it's going to cost them. So, you know, um, run through FedEx's website. I really do recommend working with Ship Your Reptiles. They, they work really great. Um, they have a little calculator on their website. You just enter the size of the box, your zip code from, zip code to, and hit enter and it will give you the price. Another really important thing to do before you ship is do a temperature check with the species especially um, and all these little guys from New Caledonia that are really sensitive to higher temperatures watch out for super well even just days that are over 80 degrees you want to be really careful about shipping then um, you can use cool packs but those cool packs do not last a really really long time so if you're shipping from like I'm in Illinois so I'm usually cooler than a lot of the states um, if you're shipping to like Florida or Arizona or Texas, you might be waiting a little while during the year. Make sure you're shipping to people that are okay with a little bit of a wait. The health of the gecko always comes first. Um, just kind of check temperatures, keep an eye out, uh, do the 10 day forecast if you can do that. Look not only for the daily highs, but um, the nightly lows and look for um, the the next couple days as well. Once in a while you will find that um, unfortunately there might be a plane mishap or a box doesn't get loaded on where it should and your gecko might be um, an extra day in shipping and honestly that's happened to me several times and it's really not something to panic about because these geckos as long as you ship during healthy safe weather um, they'll do fine in the box. Um, just pack well so that they're not jostled around too too much. Um, I just want to show you this girl is she's about 60 grams she's kind of a big built girl and I did have her in this eight ounce cup and that seems really small and a little bit cramped but I prefer these smaller cups to the really big ones because um, when you put these geckos especially something with a lot of mass like her into like a bigger cup um, they'll they'll really slam around in there and they do admittedly toss these boxes once in a while so you need to just kind of prepare with a smaller cup they can't really slide around that much there's not a lot of room to move around in there so that means that they can't really build up a lot of momentum to slam against the the you know the cup lid or the cup sides um, that's just something else that will help keep your gecko safe. Don't use oversized cups. One more thing you can do for your customers, kind of check out um, the FedEx. If you're using FedEx, they have a nice calculator for get rates and transit times. I ship all of my geckos using their priority overnight service. And for most people, that means the gecko gets there at 1030 AM or earlier. Um, but sometimes, depending on like how far away their homes are from the hubs, um, it can take until noon or it can take up to 4.30 p.m. that, that same day. So um, you kind of want to make sure that your customers know in advance how long it's going to be. So be sure to check that check rates and transit times um, tab on the FedEx website so your customer will be knowledgeable about when they could possibly be expecting their package. But yeah, like I said, um, if you have any questions about when you should be using heat or cold, what temperatures you should be shipping at, 
um, if a given day is going to be safe for your geckos to be shipped, send me a message, let me know. Um, I answer fastest in email, jb at jbscrusties.com, or you can hit me up on Facebook too. I'm at jbscrusties there. Cool guys, take care.